Alma will do a lot of things, and I could talk your ear off for a while, but perhaps the most exciting thing it will do is it will directly image the formation of planets. Now, it can't do that all the way across the galaxy, of course. It can't do it 100,000 light years away. But in the relatively nearby star-forming regions, although you know, Taurus, Ophiuchus, Corona Australis, regions that are anywhere from 150 light years to 500 light years away, a lot of territory, Alma will be able to uh, directly <coughs> image planets being formed around other stars. So on the right side are perfect images. So if, if, uh, if there were no degradation due to distance, then Alma would see exactly this. And then given that these objects really are hundreds of light years away, Alma will actually see images like this. And so, you know, you can detect these planets that are forming. Um, and this is really exciting stuff. We'll be able to see objects as they um, revolve around forming stars, you know, anywhere from a year to many years. And that's never been done. We infer their existence, but we don't directly see them. Well, this is the timeline that we talked a little bit about. Alma's been underway for a while. It is a really big project. It's a $1.3 billion construction project for which the United States, uh, North America, is paying about half a billion dollars. Of that North American piece, our Canadian colleagues um, are paying about 7%. And then the Euro our European colleagues, led by ESO, 37%, and then our Japanese colleagues, about 25%. And so a lot of things have happened, including groundbreaking at the high site, Japan formally joining Alma, and the first antennas arriving, and not too terribly long, about two years, which seems like a long time, but is fundamentally tomorrow, as Heidi and I know, uh, we will begin to do science with Alma. So our team of people who are responsible for Alma are spending a lot of time doing operations planning. How will you do this? Astronomers will not travel to Chile. To, as you would probably guess. They will not travel to Chile to use ALMA. North American scientists will access ALMA through the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. In fact, the headquarters building here at the base of Oak Hill is also the North American ALMA Science Center, NASC, which is the portal for astronomers to access um, ALMA from North America. Similarly, our European colleagues are setting up science centers for European astronomers to access ALMA. Uh, and the Japanese are doing something analogous as well. In 2012, at the end of 2012, AMA construction will be complete and we will have achieved full operations at that point. So all 66 antennas will be operating and we expect AMA will be doing science almost all the time. This is the, uh, the so-called technical building at 16,500 feet. This is where the correlator is located. It actually is in a state of completion that's beyond what you see here. It's done. That was one of our responsibilities. Okay, wake up. Well, let me just talk briefly about the square kilometer array. We're always thinking to the future, right? ALMA and EVLA are future telescopes. They begin to do science in roughly two years. They reach full operations in 2012, 2013, and they have a lifetime that's certainly measured in decades. But we, of course, and astronomers around the world are thinking beyond that. So in the optical, people are thinking about the giant segmented mirror telescope. Our European colleagues for a long time were talking about a telescope called OWL. Does anybody know what OWL stands for? O-W-L? Overwhelmingly large. Yeah, not a riot. Overwhelmingly large telescope. I've never seen my German friends exhibit much humor, but, but I thought that was pretty good. OWL. And, uh, and they... they decided they could do it. 100 meter, 100 meter diameter optical telescope, segmented, right? They decided they could do it. I mean, there's some problems, of course, but they could do it. But North America, especially the United States, was talking about 20, 30, 40 meter diameter telescopes. And the Europeans are very concerned that we would get those built well before they could build a 100 meter telescope and they would lose preeminence, which quite frankly, they have in optical astronomy. Um, so they have scaled back, and now they talk about not AL, but the EELT, the European Extremely Large Telescope, which last I saw was intended, being designed as a 42 meter, dia uh, 42 meter diameter optical telescope. That's still, that's a long thing. Yeah, that's big. That's impressive. And we'll see what the giant segmented mirror telescope turns out to be. Now in the radio, we're starting to talk about the square kilometer array. 
very seriously. If you want to see fainter, further, better, you really have two choices, right? You can make better detectors. Now, as in the optical, the detectors in the radio are almost perfect. That is, they detect almost all of the radiation that falls on them. Right? It used to be, back in the days, and we won't admit how old I am, when people used to use photographic plates, very little of the radiation, very little of the visible light that falls on that photographic plate would actually be detected by the plate, maybe somewhere between 1 and 6 or 7 percent. So a lot of the light that would fall on the photographic plate isn't detected by the photographic plate. Well, the CCDs that we now all have, and I'm sure many of you have on your telescopes, are very efficient. That is, they detect almost all of the radiation that falls on them, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. So there's no factors of two left, right? You can't make a, a detector that detects five times the amount of radiation that falls on it. 100 percent is the best you can do. Well, what else can you do if you want to see fainter further better? You can make a better detector, or you can build a bigger telescope. You can build a bigger bucket, right? Basically, the starlight, whether it's visible light or radio radiation, is literally raining down on the Earth or the moon. And if you want to collect more of it, you put out a bigger bucket, a bigger primary mirror, a bigger radio telescope, whatever. Well, given that the detectors in the radio are darn near perfect, the technology's come a long way, it's just like in the optical, astronomers are talking seriously about building a really big telescope, a telescope that has a square kilometer of collecting area. That's a lot. That's 250 acres in round numbers. So that's a big telescope. You can't do that with the technologies we have now. Mostly, I mean, you could conceive of it. You could theoretically do it, but you couldn't pay for it. It would, it would, it would cost you $10 billion or something. And I mean, quite honestly, I'm, I'm um, gratified and delighted by the generosity that the taxpaying public shows for science. But we're not going to get $10 billion to build a radio telescope, let's be serious. And uh, so new things have to be done. And this is another very international effort. And where this ends up is really not understood yet. It's been going on already, been talked about for almost 10 years, just like ALMA began as three separate projects in the 1980s. The Japanese wanted to do millimeter astronomy. The Europeans wanted to do millimeter astronomy. We wanted to do millimeter astronomy. And actually, incredibly, it all came together in a very productive way. And so SKA, as a project right now, is going through that early <coughs> integration. People are talking about a wide range of things. <coughs> the key science is a lot of things that I'm sure you would predict. So the cradle of life. People want to look very seriously for the precursor molecules for life. Uh, lots of interesting gravity tests, strong gravity, uh, using pulsars and black holes, the origin and evolution of cosmic magnetism. Cosmology is always at the top of everybody's list, right? And being able to probe back to the so-called dark ages between the time of the microwave sky and the very first stars and galaxies in our universe. That's when the age of the universe was, say, 400,000 years to a billion years or so. Lots of wonderful stuff. <clears throat> 